not everyone realizes exactly how much we do with Grand Prix cars. We actively buy and sell the world's greatest Formula One cars. And I'm so excited today to be able to do a short clip and share with you this Lewis Hamilton multiple Grand Prix winning McLaren MP422. This is a car that we purchased recently and it's so exciting. You know, I sell the world's greatest cars and have sold some of the world's most valuable cars that's ever been traded. And although this is an incredibly valuable car, it's not of the same level as say a 250 GTO or a 250 Testarossa or some of the other amazing road cars that we've sold over the years. But I think this particular car is right up there, definitely in the top five cars of maybe the most significant cars that I've ever bought or sold. This car is the car that Lewis Hamilton won his first two races in. He also achieved his first two pole positions in it. And then to top it off, he had multiple other race entries in the car, including a second at Monza. And then his teammate of 2007, if you're a Formula One nerd, you will know this straight away was the great Fernando Alonso. And Lewis and Fernando had a, a battle that year that they probably definitely weren't mates at the end of the year. And uh, McLaren found themselves in a bit of hot water, obviously in the 2007 championship. But this car, Lewis started in it and he got his first two pole positions. He won his first two races. And then Fernando also jumped in the car and Fernando also had a win in it. So it's a three time Grand Prix winner with two different world champions. The MP422 was the car that won the Constructors' Championship by an absolute mile that year before they had the Spygate um, controversy and you know they uh, were ended up being excluded from the championship after the championship had been finished and to be able to buy this car acquire this car have this car I think Grand Prix cars for me are so special they're so undervalued they're cars that have gone up a lot in value in recent years but they deserve to go up way more when you think of how many people um, are employed to put two cars on the grid throughout a championship season and how a car whether it's a ferrari or a mclaren or a mercedes-benz the performance of that particular race car on the track how it changes that manufacturer's success its road car success it's just this for me is the closest interpretation of a rolling piece of art this is a modern sculpture When you take a closer look at this particular car and you see all of the wild aero that's on it, which changed the following year, actually, a 2007 car for me was a much prettier car than the 2008 McLaren. And it's actually a way more dominant car. I think the 2007 McLaren was a bit like the Red Bull of this year. It was impossible to believe that McLaren could have not won the Drivers' Championship that year. And the only reason they didn't is because they didn't give any favoritism or didn't have a number one driver. There was Hamilton and Alonso that were both going head to head and they both managed to lose the championship by one point. At the end of the season, McLaren must have been absolutely headless. But when you look closer at the car and you look at its beauty and the wild aero that's all over it and the little nodules that's on the back that you don't see unless you're up close and personal. And then you see the brushed airline in the paintwork that actually starts all the way from the front, from the Mercedes-Benz badge that is referring to the engine because of this era, it was a McLaren Mercedes. So it had the Mercedes-Benz V8 in the rear. And before you ask or before you wonder, yes, the car still has its original engine. Yes, it's a full running car. Not only do we only focus on cars that are complete cars and Grand Prix cars, but I actually only ever buy Grand Prix winning cars. If a car's had three second place finishes, it doesn't turn me on as much as having a car that's actually won one race. Like I only want to buy and sell Grand Prix winning cars because that's for me, that's the collectability, that's the provenance, you know, that's the modern art sculpture when, you know, instead of buying a Jeff Coombs bunny rabbit for $209 million or however much they sell for, I want to say, I've got the car that changed history. I've got the car that won a race that Nicky Lauda sat in or Lewis Hamilton or Michael Schumacher or Jackie Stewart 
they're the cars that actually made history. Um, but going back to the aesthetic beauty of this car, um, you have the brushed airline that starts from the Mercedes-Benz badge and it comes all the way down the side and then it, it comes into the exhaust tailpipes as if it's going to continue on with the flames coming out the rear. It's, it's the real, I think the Ron, Den, Ron Dennis era of McLaren actually, um, he deserves a lot of credit because, you know, the OCD, the beauty, the aesthetic beauty that was in, that went into these cars, um, when you really come up close and look at it and study it, it's fascinating. The steering wheel on these cars, they just clip in and out very quickly. Again, you have your Mercedes-Benz logo in the center. All of these controls, of which I actually don't know what they all do, if I'm perfectly honest, but I just give credit to uh, Lewis and Fernando to think as they was driving along, doing over 200 miles an hour, um, they managed to just change their settings. Um, traction control button, that's interesting. This is the last McLaren to have had traction control. So after 2007, 2008 season, um, traction control was banned. Not the reason why I bought the car actually, but if you were gonna be buying the car to drive, it's probably better to buy one with traction control. It will help you out a little bit easier if you're gonna go and take it on your test days at my favorite track, Donington. The other thing about this car is it was the last car. This particular car was the, the car that won the last ever race at Indianapolis. So the last Formula One race, and they'll probably never go back to Indianapolis. So I think that's something else. Not only is it a multiple winning car with two world champions, but it's the car that Hamilton, the greatest driver of all time, got his first two pole positions in, won his first two races in, also won the last race to ever be held at Indianapolis. Um, and then Fernando, who might be the second or third best driver or whatever, he also won a race in it. Other thing that will, I think, blow your mind on Formula One cars is engines in the rear, running engines in the rear. This is at full weight. And yet that's how heavy it is. It is so light. I'm not incredibly strong either, just in case it's, uh, you're wondering, but um, it's just such a light car. The technology that, went, that goes into these Formula One cars, um, it's mind blowing. And for me, this is one of the most significant cars that I've ever bought or sold. And Formula One cars, for me, are cars that I just hope everybody else wakes up to. And I hope all you car people out there, I hope you all get as stimulated as I do and you start buying them and you treat them as your modern piece of art, as your modern sculpture, or you are the absolute daddy. If you buy one, take it on the track and you use it as it was built for.